Hey folks, welcome to another product review at Phenomenal. Today we're going to look at the largest low volatility ETF globally, which is iShares MSCI USA Min Vol Tact ETF that trades under the ticker USMV. Now, the fund manages around $26 billion. It charges 15 base points, which is fairly cheap, and it has a long track record going back to 2011 12 ish. Now, let's have a quick look in terms of how this fund has done from a performance perspective. Um, now, it is worth mentioning that USMV is a passive ETF, so it does track an index. And what our performance benchmarking tool shows that the suggested benchmark is the MSCI US Winnable Index, but that's actually the index that the product tracks. So we're going to disregard that suggestion and simply go for the S&P 500 um, as the benchmark, which kind of makes sense because USMV picks primarily large cap and two degree mid cap stocks. From a performance perspective, we can see that USMV kind of like um, performed in line with the S&P 500 in the period from 2012 to 2020, but post COVID significantly underperformed the S&P 500. Now it is worth mentioning that low volatility or low risk stocks as they're also called, um, are not supposed to outperform other stocks. They are supposed to generate higher risk adjusted returns, uh, you know, stated differently a higher sharp ratio, um, which we'll get to later on. Now let's have a quick look in terms of the overlap between the benchmark and USMV. And we're going to use um, SPY as a proxy for the S&P 500. And going to do a quick fund overlap analysis. Now we can see that USMV has a portfolio of around 170 stocks. So this well, quite highly diversified compared to 500 for the S&P 500. So there's an overlap of 152 stocks, which equates to 31% um, if you calculate like the overlap percentages. Now that equates to roughly 69% for an active share, which is not particularly high and active share is important for generating outperformance. Now, the other thing what's kind of um, interesting to view here is how has USMV done versus the S&P 500 when markets um, went down, either crashed or had uh, bear markets? And that's the primary reason why investors are interested in low volatility strategies, that they are supposed to provide lower drawdowns than the market. And if you look at the history going back to 2012 to 2024, we do see that that was the case in uh, most times where effectively USMV had lower drawdowns than the market. Having said that, there were periods here, for example, in 2016, as well as during COVID, where low volatility stocks did not provide lower drawdowns. And often that can be explained simply by the portfolio of USMV. So before the COVID crisis, the portfolio was um, overweight in low risk or low volatility stocks that are um, kind of like these boring companies that don't do much, um, like real estate utilities and telecoms. Um, but especially real estate companies got hit pretty hard during COVID because no one went to the office, no one went to the shopping centers, um, and so significantly underperformed the market. And so here's a period where effectively USMV didn't do what most investors expected to do. Now, the other thing that we should check if USMV is doing what it's supposed to do, um, which is provide exposure to the low volatility factor. And we're going to use our Know Your Factors tool for this. In this tool, we're going to have a quick look at factor betas from a returns-based factor exposure analysis. And we see effectively that the exposure to the low volatility factor was consistently positive, which is great. So the product does what is expected supposed to do. Now, we also see that there was positive exposure to the size factor. Um, that means that the average or median market cap um, in USMB was slightly lower than that of the S&P 100. We do see kind of like, like almost random or zero um, betas to momentum and quality, but also consistently negative exposure to value factor, which means that the average stock 
in USMV is more expensive than the one in the S&P 500. Now, uh, let's have a quick look in terms of how USMV has performed versus its peers. And we're going to use this tool called Asset Compare, where we will select uh, three other low volatility ETFs um, to simply compare the characteristics um, of USMB versus its um, peers. Uh, also going to add SPY for the SP500, so we have an indication of the market. And we're going to kick off um, to look at risk versus return. So on the left hand side, we can see the CAGR, the annual return, and down here we can see the analyzed volatility. We do see that the stock market, i.e. the S&P 500, generated the highest amount of uh, volatility, but also the highest return. We do see USMV had the lowest volatility, but also return that was on the lower side. Now, if you look at the ratio between risk and return, right, we can simply look at the Sharpe ratio, uh, which you can find on this page, and we see the Sharpe ratio of USMV was 0 0.68, which is higher than, for example, that of this product, but it's lower than the 0 0.79 of Fidelity's product. Now, intuitively, we might say, you know, like if I'm interested in a low vol ETF, why not go for the one with the highest Sharpe ratio, which in this case would not be USMB with 0 0.68, but it would be Fidelity's. Having said this, uh, the reason why you should be, you know, like if you are interested in a low vol strategy, you should be buying the product that provides the highest exposure. And for this, we're going to have a quick look at the factor betas to the low volatility in the Fund Explorer uh, tool. We can simply select all of them and compare them. So here we have all four low volatility Fs. Uh, at the bottom we can see USMB. And on this side, we do see the factor betas to the low volatility factor. So effectively, we can see that uh, USMV has um, a beta of 0.58 to low vol, the factor, um, versus a product that was quite attractive from a sharp perspective, the one from Fidelity, has only a beta of 0.37. And uh, most interesting from this perspective is um, the product from Invesco, SPLV, because that has the highest exposure to the low volatility factor. So that kind of um, summarizes it in terms of a quick product review of USMB. So if you look back over the entire track record, which is close to 12 years by now, we do see that USMB has on average provided lower drawdowns than the stock market. So that's what investors um, kind of are interested. Um, having said that, um, we can also see um, a significant underperformance over the last two years, which we can explain, for example, by being underweight tech stocks in the Magnificent 7 and so on. And the other aspect to recall is that if you do want exposure to a low vol ETF, you would advocate to go for the one that has the highest factor exposure, uh, which in this case would not be USB. Um, and so that's something worth considering. Um, from the fee perspective, they're all kind of like on the lower side, 0 0.13 to 0 0.29. Um, and, um, you know, at that fee level, we would argue it makes more sense to look at the exposures the product provides rather than the fee basis for its difference. So that's it in a nutshell. Hope this was helpful. Have a nice day.